Hello, everyone. We are here today with Catherine Robles Shaw, who is one of the participating artists in the Santeras Images of Faith and Folklore exhibition that's being presented at the Harwood Museum in Taos, New Mexico. This exhibition is co curated by Gustavo Victor Goler and museum curator Nicole Ashley Dial K. How are you, Catherine? I'm great. Awesome. Tell me uh, first, uh, where, where were you raised and uh, where do you live now? I was raised in Denver. Uh, my family roots come from San Luis Valley, Las Masitas, Colorado. And I live in Nederland, Colorado. It's uh, 20 minutes west of Boulder. So um, I know the uh, family ties yeah, down in southern uh, Colorado. Um, it was Robel, Robel was a relative? Robel Jaramillo. Right, and he was a Santero himself? Or? He was a Santero for maybe 30 years. And wow. uh, I met him back in 96. My mother used to say, wow, you have a, a, a cousin that does this work. And I said, well, one day I'll come and visit. I had a show in Taos and we managed just to go down uh, Highway 17 and call him up. There was a phone booth with a actually uh <laughs> you know the the yellow pages or the white pages they called him and i just called him up we met up that's it fantastic it's great to meet him I, I seem to actually remember that you know yes he was a uh, he was a lot of fun yeah he I, made all his tools and not everything that he did was handmade you yeah. know i was just quite blown away you know we have modern days now we could go to the you know, sawmills and get cut boards. He used right. to do it all. <laughs> so uh, tell me, how many years have you been an artist and how did you become an artist? Well, it was just uh, something I wanted to do. I've always been an artist. I used to have macrame classes down in Denver when I was about 18 years old. And uh, I always... Uh, I used to do pencil work way back then. We used to have black and white newspapers and they had advertising of women with beautiful clothes on or whatever, you know, I used to kind of do that kind of work, you know, just scribbling on a piece of paper or whatever, you know. But I grew up pretty much an artist. My family was, a, all my family were artists. There's really nothing you could do. I, I remember back then, we didn't even have a, a TV until I was, 13 and a half. Wow. You know, it's mm -hmm. quite, you know, you listen to music or you went out and played. Right. <laughs> you done something. I, I had a cooking class for people with my friends and they would bring a cup of flour and somebody would bring a cup of sugar, whatever, two eggs. We'd make cakes and go. After we were done, we used to go to the park and have a picnic. You know, nice. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so I, I was a cook also. So how many how many years have you been in Spanish market? Uh, 26 years. I started back in 91 just uh, dabbling and making Santos. Michael encouraged me to do Santos. And uh, it was just for family and friends. And it was not until 94. I actually sold my work to the Denver Art Museum and the Taylor Museum, Colorado Springs. And Allie Jeffers got me interested in Spanish market. She encouraged me to jury in Spanish market. Right. So in 95 was my first show. So were you influenced by other Santeros, um, you know, other than your, your cousin? That you my had cousin. Yeah. Yes. And, um, I went to Spanish market in 94 and I, I went around the plaza and meeting other people and you were one of them, right. Arlene and Charlie. I took a class from Charlie back then, also a two hour class because I was painting with um, exotic veneers on applique on boards and with acrylic paints. And after I took a class from Charlie, I came home that week and changed everything completely and uh, started using uh, whiting and the rabbit skin glue and uh, 
went from there, you know, is trial and error because you didn't get no recipe. So uh, just picking uh, plants and doing natural pigments like um, aspen bark became my brown. We just cook it up and, and add a little alum and it became the, the flesh of the face and then light browns. And as it formatted during the weeks, it changed the medium of colors. That's interesting. Which is really cool. Yeah, that you is know, cool. just trial and error. Right. right. And uh, in '91, I started selling uh, my Santos to uh, Raymond Ball, and he said, "Follow the buck." It was a New Kingdom of Saints by Larry Frank. Yep. And that's when I started. You know, just <laughs> going by the books and reading the stories of how they were supposed to be. Right. Uh, teardrop wise and you know just the different way they had their hands and their fingers so it was pretty much from there I went off and then back in 98 I started doing both those buy books also because I didn't have no class and then I found a class at CU Boulder and uh, it just kept on continuing you know just sitting down and really whittling with the knife, you know, I, I did my lunettes and all that by knives also and chisels. And eh, I just tried my best, you know, yeah, I did more traditional work than anything, you know, just following the book, like Raymond said, right, you know, right. Raymond's been a big help, right? To a lot of the Santeros and Santeras throughout the years. I, I know that he helped me out you know, early on in my career, uh, which was really great. Uh, he would just buy the work, you know, you didn't have to put it in there and wait for it to sell. And so that was helpful as an artist. Uh, um, do you consider yourself more um, a painter or a carver? And do you explore other mediums or techniques in, in the cultural arts of New Mexico? Well, I consider myself when back then it was an artist and then it just followed that, you know, it was more deeper than that. You know, I grew up in a Catholic tradition of going to church all the time and seeing here in Colorado in the churches, the Spanish colonial arts, you know, Santos, which was a lot, it meant a lot to me because I says, well, I could do that. You know, and then it's, following up with going to New Mexico and the museums and meeting people. Right. Um, but you, you paint and you carve, right? I do carve. Yeah. I, I started carving uh, back in 98. And I, I don't do very many. I maybe do uh, uh, two a year, two of both those a year. But I embellish them uh, also with my altar screens. That's my forte. I love to do altar screens. Altar screens, yeah. I call them more home, home uh, size altar screens. You know, I but I do have many in the museums. Right. And right. Uh, uh, I my first one was uh, uh, the Denver Art Museum, and that's when I started saying to myself, I really do like to do altar screens. So that's where yeah, it all You've done some beautiful ends, you know? things yeah, that I've seen. Um, can you describe your work a little bit and, and your thought process, uh, just how you come up with your ideas, uh, why you paint certain things? Uh, uh, do you sketch things out? I don't. <laughs> I'm really bad about that. It's all up here. I have dreams sometimes, and I know what I'm going to do once I buy my woods. And I could see visions through the woods. It's kind of quite funny about that, but um, I start with dreams and go from there. You know, it changes over time, and you know, because I'm working on something that I want to really become outstanding, of course. You know, so it might change during, with the the images itself and I just go from there and right. yep. and it works for me. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, that's how I, I have to sketch everything out, but I know other people just look at the piece of wood and just you see the image. It it's out. same with the bolts, you know, yeah. that, yeah. I, that uh, wood 
twisted in every, you know, every direction that right. saying, wow, I could use this. <laughs> um, do you have any memorable projects uh, or awards that are uh, important to you that stick out, you know, particularly, I know you've won a lot of awards. So, yes. um, you know, is well, there any one project or, you know, that really um, was stood out to me? I like the, uh, we had a group down in Denver we, at the Regis University. We, we uh, all, it was about 10 of us that made this altar screen for one of the libraries. And that was a lot of fun to do. And I thought, well, maybe one of these days I'm gonna make a bigger, you know, bigger one for my house or whatever, you know, it's just like, that was nice. But um, most of all, I, I do love the one that was at the Millicent Rogers, and I think it's that's the one that's, that's showing the, at the yeah, show. Yeah, that's right showing now. now, right? So and oh, uh, the family of saints. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's yeah. That's a beautiful piece. Um, do you consider yourself a, a santera or an artist? An artist first, and the santera later. Later. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's you know everyone has a different uh, a different answer. Some yeah. some of the artists in this exhibition will say just plainly artists, while others are very adamant that they are santeras more than anything. So, I, well, I am that too, but you, you know, know I'm, I take it as you know being an artist it'll, it might be a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> It's never easy. Um, is there anything else you would like to say, either about your work or yourself? This is sort of the end of uh, the interview. If there's something that you would like to add. Well, I'd just like to say it's been a journey, and I hope to continue the art, uh, the Spanish colonial arts, and hopefully that will stay with me forever. Right. Uh, continuing to do great work. Yeah. All right. Well, Catherine, you know, thank you so much uh, for taking the time and, and participating. And, uh, you know, hopefully we will see you soon. See, yeah, see us. I'll see you soon, Victor. You take care. Okay. Bye.